So let's pretend for a second that this is art and not strictly utilitarian. If that's the case, then experimenting with more rare or uncommon subdivisions like quintuplets or septuplets, I mean, it's kind of cliche now to, to work on stuff like that, but let's just say there's more beauty in the art and the exploration than there is now a utilitarian purpose for. Does that make sense? I had a short interaction on um, on Adam Tuminaro's page. Uh, I can read it here real quick, actually, because it was a very interesting. Oh, listening to some Smash stuff earlier, trying to get better at Smash. So if anybody plays Super Smash Brothers, um, wait for me. I'm, I'm not ready yet. So where is it? Um. Insta Chops. He has so much, he has so many good looking videos. Oh my gosh. Those are some goals, let me tell you. Uh, I'm gonna have to do this from memory. Somebody asked him if he was ever going to do a video on odd subdivisions and he was like, no. And he graciously mentioned me and for some reason called me a wizard, which is weird because I'm definitely not a wizard no matter what anybody says, I'm just some dude that um, likes really elaborate and unusual things for no reason. But that's kind of the point, right? I'm attracted to the stuff that I'm attracted to because, I mean, at no point in my musical journey did I actively choose to like the types of things that I like. I just do. And if you don't, even if you feel like you don't because they don't serve some sort of like functional purpose, then that's fine, right? That's your opinion. And in such a, a such a subjective space like music and the way that you express yourself, the way that you play basically is your opinion. So fine. But because I like what I like, I feel like I can at least try to defend it. The reason that I work on odd groupings, uh, for one, is to get more mileage out of patterns and like phrases that I already play. Because there, there are millions of ways to combine basic phrases to create a unique voice. And the more that you understand about how these phrases can be uh, manipulated and how they can be put together, oftentimes through the study of, of the history of the instrument and what the greats have done, the more options that you have uh, to really stretch basic vocabulary, which is really all anyone has ever done on the instrument. There are very few like trailblazers when it comes to um, the way that the instrument is being looked at. I didn't say zero, I didn't say none, but very few. Um, and even the ones that are on the top of the game right now, none of them happened in a vacuum, but that's another topic for another time. So the reason that I like working with odd patterns, odd groupings in mismatched odd subdivisions basically is because they're cool and literally nothing sounds like it. So the thing that I'm going to talk about today is this uh, specific 11 note rhythm that I've been working on. It's a grouping of six and a grouping of five in a very specific way, even though it's not the first way that I actually worked on it. It's the way that I'm working on it now. So I felt like it, it was probably important for me to, first of all, tell you where a lot of these things came from, because a lot of people on the internet um, used patterns like this all the time and even though they inspired me to work on patterns like this they're not my first exposure to these types of patterns the six note pattern that i use the right left left right right kick uh basically a tap five with the bass drum or an inverted paradiddle diddle with um 
the left um, at the end being substituted by the bass drum. I mean, there are tons of ways to look at these patterns. But the first time I encountered that specific pattern or fragment of a pattern was in Future Sounds by David Garibaldi, a book that you probably need to look at if you have never seen it before. I had a VHS and a book called Rick's Licks. Rick, Rick, Rick's Licks. I encountered a five note pattern was basically um, a paradiddle and a kick drum. So right, left, right, right, kick. And that was the first time I'd ever seen it. So as I started to explore more five note patterns that were similar, I started just putting the paradiddle uh, inversions before a kick drum. So that gave me right, left, right, right, kick, right, left, left, right, kick, right, right, left, right, kick, and right, left, right, left, kick. Funny enough, non-alternating, um, if you stay on that one side, that's the same five note pattern from the Gary Chafee book. Uh, what, which one is it? Uh, time functioning patterns. Oh, okay. And first of all, fantastic. Part of me wants to take off the hoodie and pretend like I've remembered my train of thought from before, but I have to kind of get this out of the way. I'm kind of torn. First of all, I, like many people, especially kind of living gig to gig, are, are terrible at saving money. So um, we are hurting right now because of the quarantines, because of the national emergencies, the state emergencies. <laughs> And that was my phone. Hi, Justin. I'll text you back in a bit. I'm having a hard time trying to figure out what to do, but it'll be okay because, you know, things hopefully generally work out, right? So I'm not putting out a video kind of ignoring everything that's happening. Yes, this is hard. It's hard for a lot of people. I just felt like I am offering Skype lessons, but I'm offering Skype lessons to the students that are not coming into the physical space anymore. You guys could hit me up too, but everybody having the same idea now, I just didn't feel like it was, there was much of a point to kind of throw my hat in the ring when generally the best drummers in the world uh, are available probably now more than ever for you to learn from. And this is probably stupid, but that's just kind of how I feel. <sighs> this lesson is going to be about why the hell I use quintuplets and septuplets. I've heard people say things like, I'm not going to work on quintuplets and septuplets because I still need to work on triplets and 16th notes and 8th notes, and that's fair, right? But so do I. I, but I feel like learning about different types of note rates is really, what the f just happened? <sighs> Did my camera battery run out again? Probably. I can't catch a break. This happened last night and I replaced the battery last night, but I forgot to turn my camera off. So it drained my battery and I'm um, not very good at this. So I'm not even sure if that recorded. Take two. The more I mess up this stuff, the harder it is to actually continue with some sort of natural flow. When I can't get my natural flow, I just turn to a refreshing bottle of Yoohoo. Yoohoo. Because I'm a man child. Mmm. Tastes like nostalgia. Mmm, 
and getting made fun of on the bus. And girls that I like not liking me back. And being big for my age. A lack of self-esteem. You who? That's enough. I learned about quintuplets from the Gary Chafee books. But before I learned how to play in quintuplets, I learned how to play five note groupings of 16th notes, which is weird because you would think, why didn't you just learn it in, in eighth notes? It's because eighth notes are slow and dull, at least to a, a 19 year old or 21. I can't remember. I'm getting old enough where all that stuff is starting to become a blur. So here are 16th notes grouped in fives in, let's say, 4-4. Four, four. Because being able to not just space those things properly, but keep the form, both of those things are extremely important. So let's start there. Once I have those things and I can I understand intuitively how five notes work, then I started to cram those things in the space of a quarter note that gave me quintuplets. So here is where we have to kind of get off the beaten path. And here is basically my gripe with what's going on in quintuplet land in general. People play quintuplets because it has a specific groove feel of the Della thing, and that's fine, right? But you're going to have to learn to phrase in quintuplets. And that means that either, you know, you, you break up the rhythms and you can play different parcels of quintuplets, which is something that we should all aspire to do if we want a facility in that rhythm. You're going to have to take the vocabulary that you have, whatever vocabulary that is, and insert it just like you did with triplets and 16th notes in quintuplets. And that has been my journey over the past few years, being able to take the phrases and the patterns that I can play fluently in 16th notes and in triplets and learn to play them in quintuplets. And that's been fairly hard. It's been hard for a few reasons. For one, my ear um, does not have the same type of uh, history with quintuplets as it does with 16th notes and triplets because those note rates are way more common. Everywhere that I turn, everywhere that I, I look, people play in 16th notes and in triplets or rather in two feels and in three feels and so any type of odd meter sorry any type of odd subdivision is basically a black sheep right now that's why it feels like all of this stuff is novel because i mean it's not novel as in new but it's definitely not done as much as uh, the other things. And so you have a lot of people that say, hey, maybe we should just uh, focus on what everybody else has done. Um, and that's fine to a point, right? Do your transcriptions, learn your licks, have your heroes listen, continue to listen, understand the history of the instrument, fine. I am not saying anything against that. It's because I examined the history of the instrument and, and the methods that we've all sort of used um, to get better, I'm just surprised that even though the, like the Chafee books, for instance, and it's not the only one, it's just my uh, my introduction to odd rhythms, just because of the because you know portraits and rhythm is another example where you are uh, faced with it and stick control. Oh my gosh, why in the world is it in so many in so many classic drum books and it's not actually utilized that much in, in playing in the real world? Now I'm going on that tangent that I didn't want to go into, and I, I just wanted to teach you how to do it. The pieces that I'm using to build this are six note pattern, 
right, left, left, right, right, kick, and left, right, right, left, kick. Before I go into quintuplets, I wanna make sure that I can play both of them separately and in more common subdivisions because even though I love quintuplets and that's sort of the name of the game here, I wanna make sure that I am not just limited to a more obscure subdivision with this particular pattern. So. I've even started not really considering if a pattern alternates or not. It's more about like, does it alternate comfortably, right? A single paradiddle is an alternating rudiment, but it doesn't mean it has to alternate. That's how you get specific lines and stick control because it's just a right paradiddle over and over again. I know that pattern is something that a lot of teachers have used in order to teach kids the, uh, or students rather, because I know I'm not all students or children, the, um, how to do the ride symbol pattern. Can you play these patterns both in alternating and in non-alternating form? That's right, left, left, right, right, kick, left, right, right, left, left, kick for the six note pattern. And for the five note pattern, right, left, left, right, kick, left, right, right, left, kick in 16th notes and in eighth note triplets. Let's get that out of the way before we ever get into the quintuplet thing.
So hopefully you've gotten that far. Now it's time to play each pattern separately in our target subdivision in quintuplets. I, I urge you to take your time with this. If you're not used to dealing with quintuplets, let alone cross rhythms over the bar line passages in quintuplets, spend time with this first before you move on to the next step because larger cycles, larger patterns take longer to resolve. And it's a lot easier to get lost with a 11 note cycle in a five note subdivision than it is for a six note cycle in a five note subdivision. Because depending on the way that you look at it, the six note pattern is displaced a quintuplet with the beat every time you go. It's also only going to take six beats in order to get to. So it lends itself to shorter passages like two bar fills much more easily than playing an 11 note quintuplet thing. This is extremely elaborate and it's just, I don't know, I, I may use it at some point. If I ever use it, it'll be by accident or rather it's because like, I want to use that type of One, tension. Two. put them together because that's how we got our 11. Now this 11 for me is the 11 that I came across again, very naturally. It You don't have to use this one, right? But here it is if you want to. One.
because I didn't grow up in Africa or I didn't grow up in Puerto Rico, I didn't grow up in um, Israel, I didn't grow up in China, my musical experience would have been much different. And so the first thing that we have to kind of admit is because we are who we are because of where we, where we live, who our parents are, and we don't choose the music that resonates with us. We just don't. We like what we like and we don't what we don't. Some of us can't even explain why, but that's just is what it is. So you either find value in these exploratory practices and understand the way that it stretches your brain past its immediate utility, or you don't. It's like some people do Sudoku or crossword puzzles, right? And those types of things could keep you sharp. Um, reading expands your mind. Reading fiction ex expands your mind, right? But you, you don't pick up a book because you're like, huh, I wonder what, how the Lord of the Rings is going to um, help me with my job. You either like it and you enjoy the journey or you don't, that's just not your cup of tea. Everything that we do on the drum set doesn't necessarily need to serve a purpose outside of the fact that we want to explore that territory. To me, that sounds fairly simple. I know this was a little rough. Thank you guys for tuning in. I have some more ideas for some stuff, so you will hear from me again soon, universe willing, because it's definitely thrown us some curveballs, and not that I think the universe has a will, it's just, I don't know why, it just seemed like the most non-offensive thing to say at the time. So, regardless of your beliefs, I hope to see you soon.